Hello and welcome to the dark side of the library. I'm one of your two spooky hosts. My name is Carrie and I'm here with Katie. Hello. Today we are chatting about upcoming dark YA young adult books coming out in February 2024 with the caveat that we are not reviewing them because we haven't read them yet. We don't have them in hand. We would love if the major publishers would start sending us some ARCs, but in the meantime, we're here to let you know about some of the really interesting dark reads coming up that you might want to check out. To that note, we have show notes with Amazon affiliate links if you want to purchase the books. We'll get a small commission, but let's get into the dark books. Katie, what's on your list? This first book, the cover, which you will see over on our YouTube channel, uh, has a creepy angel staring at me, crying white tears. It's very spooky. <laughs> this book is called The Bad Ones. This is by Melissa Albert, and it comes out February 20th. It is published by Flat Iron Books. So it says, goddess, goddess, count to five in the morning. Who's alive? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I do, too. I can imagine myself in the dark waiting in a mirror or like looking at a mirror uh anyway in the course of a single winter's night four people vanish without a trace across a small town Nora's estranged best friend becca is one of the lost as nora tries to untangle the truth of becca's disappearance she discovers a darkness in her town's past as well as a string of coded messages becca left for her to unravel these clues lead Nora to a piece of local lore, a legendary goddess of forgotten origins who mm. played a role in Nora and Becca's own childhood games. That's kind of cool, actually. I Like a creepy goddess, I guess. So it's an arresting crossover horror fantasy threaded with dark magic. This book is a poison pen love letter to semi-toxic best friendship the occult power of childhood play and artistic creation and the razor thin line between make believe and belief. This sounds really great for young adult readers this is for grade levels 10 through 12. This is the bad ones. This is by Melissa Albert. And she wrote the Hazel Woods series that I loved so much. Oh, okay. This has got to be a, I mean, cause Hazel Woods, it's dark, but not this dark. I don't think it sounds mm. like. Yeah. My first book of the day for young adults is Clarion Call, part of the Raven Song series by Kayla Fay. It's for grade level 7 to 9. It comes out February 6. Nev and her sisters failed in protecting the mortal world against the legions of hell oh. when the veil that they'd spent their lives guarding split and the vengeful cousin they forgot ever existed. Whoa, I, Katie, I hope you're not my vengeful cousin. Oh, God, I know you <clears throat> exist. <laughs> Their vengeful cousin managed to slip through. Dangerous and bitter, Aod is on a mission to free the rest of their family still trapped between, behind the veil and set them loose on the mortal world. Nev is still injured from her last battle, and she's working to track Aod, but also trying to navigate painful memories that keep rising to the surface. Memories of her past lifetimes protecting the gate and of her first life before she and her sisters scrubbed it from their minds. More questions arise when a new family member reveals themselves. Someone Nev and her sisters have been missing. Someone who might be able to save them all. Nev has to face the sins of her past, just like in so many books lately. Yes. <laughs> While navigating the dangers of the present, the more she remembers, the more it seems like everything she was raised to believe was a lie. Another big plot line lately in so many books. The Nev is caught between humanity and divinity, the past and the present. That's Clarion Call by Kayla Fay. My next book has an enchanting cover and is a very interesting, it has a really interesting magic system. So this is called Daughter of the Bone Forest. This is book one of the Witch Hall duology. It is by Jasmine Skye and it comes out February 27th. And the publisher is Fable and Friends. It says, Two girls reluctantly bound by fate must weather a dangerous courtship as a prophesied war grows ever closer. It is a queer normative dark fantasy debut. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Rosie is a bone familiar. 
gifted with the power to shift into animals marked with exposed bone. So she spends most of her days in the magical bone forest, caring for her feral grandmother and hiding her powers to avoid conscription by the witch king's army. Feral grandmother. <laughs> I wished I had a feral grandmother. So until the day that Princess Shaw, a witch known as Death's heir, visits the forest. When Rosie saves Shaw's life, the princess offers her the chance to attend the prestigious school Witch Hall as payment. Though Rosie is wary of Shaw's intentions, she cannot pass up the opportunity to find the cure for her grandmother's affliction. But at Witch Hall, Rosie finds herself embroiled in political games she doesn't understand. Shaw wants Rosie for her entourage, a partner to help lead the coming war. All Rosie wants is to stay out of trouble until she can graduate and save her grandma. But she can't deny her attraction to Shaw or the comfort Shaw's magic gives her. Will Rosie give in to her destiny or will the Bone Forest call her home once and for all? I'm excited because I don't know what a bone familiar is. I'm sure I can get the gist of it, but I like this kind of magic system. It's really cool. Yeah, this that's unusual. Called... Yeah, especially if it's like shift into animals marked with exposed bone. So Ouch. There's a lot there. So this is Daughter of the Bone Forest. This is by Jasmine Sky. I love the title of my next book. It's Dead Things Are Closer Than They Appear. <laughs> It's by Robin Wasley. It comes out February 13. It's by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Grade levels 9 to 12. High school is hard enough to survive without an apocalypse to navigate. Sid Spencer has always been the most normal girl in her abnormal hometown. A tourist trap built over one of the fault lines that seal magic away from the world. Meanwhile, all Sid has to deal with is hair-ruining humidity, painful awkwardness, being one of four Asians in town, and her friends dumping her when they start dating each other. I hate when that happens. Oh, I do actually hate when that <laughs> happens. <laughs> and all of this is just days after one of the most humiliating romantic rejections faced by anyone ever in all of history. But then someone kills one of the guardians who protect the seal. The earth rips open and unleashes the magic trapped inside. Monsters crawl from the ground. No one can enter or leave, and the man behind it all is roaming the streets with a gang of violent vigilantes. Suddenly, Sid's life becomes a lot less ordinary. When she finds out her missing brother is involved, she joins the remaining guardians, desperate to find him and close the fault line for good. Fighting through hordes of living corpses and uncontrollable growths of forest... What's it? What is it with evil trees lately? Anyway... <laughs> No. Sid and a ragtag crew of would-be heroes are the only thing standing between their town and the end of the world as they know it. This is called Dead Things Are Closer Than They Appear by Robin Wasley. That sounds great, <laughs> including the trees. Maybe it's because spring is coming, and so we got to think about how evil those trees are. <laughs> so my next book is The Diablo's Curse. It is by Gabe Cole Novoa, and it comes out February 20th. I'm not seeing the, oh no, sorry, the publisher's Random House Books for Young Readers. There it is. So this book is about a teen demon who wants to be human, a boy cursed to die young, and the murderous island destined to bury them both. Dammy is a demon determined to cancel every deal they've ever made in order to tether their soul to earth and become human again. There's just one person standing in their way, Silas. An irresistibly and stubborn, cute boy cursed to die young, except for the deal with Dammy that is keeping him alive. If they cancel the deal, Silas is dead. Unless they can destroy the curse that has plagued Silas's family for generations. But to do so, Dammy and Silence, Silas are going to have to work together. That is, if the curse doesn't kill them first. This, not, I mean, short, simple, sweet. This sounds really good. This is called The Diablo's Curse. This is by Gabe Cole Novoa. My next book is Heartless Hunter. It's book one of the Crimson Moth series by Kristen Ciccarelli. The publisher is Wednesday Books, and this comes out February 24. 
It's an enemies to lovers involving a witch and witch hunter falling in love. It's a romantic oh. fantasy. On the night Rune's life changed forever, blood ran in the streets. Now, in the aftermath of a devastating revolution, witches have been diminished from powerful rulers to outcasts ruthlessly hunted due to their waning magic. And Rune must hide what she is. She spends her days pretending to be nothing more than a vapid young socialite. That would be kind of fun. Yeah. But Rune spends her nights as the Crimson Moth, a witch vigilante who rescues her kind from being purged. Well, does she ever sleep? I guess not. <laughs> when a rescue goes wrong, she decides to throw the witch hunters off her scent and gain the intel she desperately needs by courting the handsome Gideon Sharp, a Ooh. notorious and unforgiving witch hunter, loyal to the revolution, who she can't help but find herself falling for. Gideon loathes the decadence and superficiality that Rune represents, but when he learns the Crimson Moth has been using Rune's merchant ships to smuggle renegade witches out of the Republic, he inserts himself into her social circles by pre pretending to court her right back. <laughs> he wow. soon realizes that beneath her beauty and shallow facade is someone fiercely intelligent and tender who feels like the perfect match. Except, what if she's the very villain he's been hunting? Spoiler alert, she is! Oh my god. <clears throat> so this is the beginning of the Crimson Moth duology, a romantic fantasy series, where the only thing more treacherous than being a witch is falling in love. It's Heartless Hunter by Kristen Cicciarelli. My next book is called Infinity Alchemist. It is a part of the Infinity Alchemist book series, book one. This came out February 6th. This is by Kaysen Calendar. I've never heard of the name Kaysen or Kaken. I think it's Kaysen before. This is published by Tortin. This is a spellbinding fantasy novel about a quest that leads three young alchemists towards dangerous truth, legendary love, and extraordinary power. And by the way, this particular version that we have linked in our show notes, the... It, at least the hardcover. It has a jacket with gold foil and a foil case stamp and an id world map. I personally love illustrated maps in all of my fantasy books. I don't know. It's just something I like. So here's what the story is about. For Ashwoods, practicing alchemy is a crime. Only a, an elite few are legally permitted to study the science of magic. So when Ash is rejected by Lancaster College of Alchemic Science, he takes a job as the school's groundskeeper instead, forced to learn alchemy in secret. When he's discovered by the condescending and brilliant apprentice Ramsey Thorne, Ash is sure he's about to be arrested. But instead of calling the Reds... Ramsey surprises Ash by making him an offer. Ramsey will keep Ash a secret if he helps her find the legendary Book of Source, a sacred text that gives its reader extraordinary power. As Ash and Ramsey work together and their feelings for each other grow, Ash discovers their mission is more dangerous than he had imagined, pitting them against influential and powerful alchemists. Ash's estranged father is included in this group of people. Ash's journey takes him through the cities and wilds across New Anglia, forced him, forcing him to discover his own definition of true power and how far he and other alchemists will go to seize it. So there's a lot of beautiful LGBTQ plus uh, stuff in this book, including a great fantasy story and alchemy. This is Infinity Alchemist by Kaysen Callender. My next book is Out of Body by Nia Davenport. It comes out February 6th. It's a YA thriller with a body swap twist. The publisher is Balzer and Bray. It features 17-year-old Megan Allen, who's been jumping from friend group to friend group in her high school, trying on identities like outfits. Nothing ever seems to fit until she meets L.C., the adventurous, charismatic girl who appears at her favorite coffee shop one day like magic. Finally, Megan feels like she's becoming the person she's meant to be, someone like L.C. On the night of their friend anniversary, what was supposed to be a bonding experience ends in a waking nightmare. Suddenly, Megan is no longer herself. Too late, she realizes that Elsie has secrets, 
dangerous ones. Betrayed by her best friend, thrust into another girl's life, and targeted by Elsie's enemies, she must claim what makes Megan Megan to get her life back or die trying. This one is not really calling to me because I like to be my own person and not copy other people, but I wanted to let you know about it anyway. It's Out of Body by Nia Davenport. My next book is, and I messed up my order here. I apologize, Carrie. I put in a kid's book in the middle of this. So my actual next book is A Tempest of Tea from the Blood and Tea series. It apparently is vampire fiction. This comes out February 20th. It is by Hafsa Faisal. And the publisher is Farrar Strauss and Garo, B-Y-R. On the streets of White Roaring, Arthi Casimir is a criminal mastermind and a collector of secrets. Her prestigious tea room transforms into an illegal bloodhouse by night, catering to the vampires feared by society. But when her establishment is threatened, Archie is forced to strike an unlikely deer with, with an alluring adversary to save it. She can't do this job alone. Calling on some of the city's most skilled outcasts, Archie hatches a plan to infiltrate the sinister, glittering vampire society known as the Ethereum. But not everyone in her ragtag crew is on her side, and as the truth be behind the heist unfolds, Archie finds herself in the midst of a conspiracy that will threaten the world as she knows it. Dark, action-packed, and swoon-worthy, this is a fantastic novel for vampire lovers. This is A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. I'm up for a new vampire book, sure. Yeah. My next book is called Snow Globe, book one of the Snow Globe duology by Su Young Park. It's been translated by Jungmin Lee Comfort. Excuse me. It is for grade levels 7 to 9 or reading age 12 to 17 years. It's described as the Hunger Games meets Squid Game. Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. So, enclosed under a vast dome, Snow Globe is the last place on Earth that's warm. Outside Snow Globe is a frozen wasteland. Oh, Merry Christmas. And every day, citizens face the icy world to get to their jobs at the power plant where they produce the energy Snow Globe needs. The only solace comes in the form of 24 hour television programming streamed directly from the domed city. Oh, yay! The residents of Snow Globe have everything fame, fortune, and above all, safety from the desolation outside their walls. But in exchange, their lives are broadcast to the less fortunate outside, who watch eagerly, hoping for the chance to one day become actors themselves. So Shobam lives for the time she spends watching the shows produced inside Snow Globe. Her favorite is called Go Around, starring Go Harry, or I'm going to say Hari because Harry made me giggle, Snow Globe's biggest star, and it turns out the key to getting Shobam her dream life. Because Hari is dead, and Shobam has been chosen to take her place. Only life inside Snow Globe is nothing like what you see on television. Reality is a lie, and truth seems to be forever out of reach. This has been translated for the first time into English from Korean. Snow Globe is a groundbreaking exploration of personal identity and the future of the world as we know it. Yikes! Wow. That's Snow Globe by So Young Park. I don't mean to make you go twice, but <gasps> to make it be to make it better again, I think you might have to go twice. <laughs> Sorry. So next, Tender Beasts by Lisselle Samberry comes out February twenty seven. After her private school is rocked by a gruesome murder, a teen tries to find the real killer and clear her brother's name in a psychological thriller. So Sunny Bear has four siblings, but only one is a murderer. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah. With the death of Sunny's mother, the matriarch of the wealthy Bear family, Sunny's once picture-perfect life is thrown into turmoil. Her mother had groomed her to be the family's next leader. So Sunny's confused when the only instructions her mother leaves is a mysterious note to take care of Dom. The problem is her youngest brother, Dom, has always been a near stranger to Sunny and seemingly a dangerous one, if he's really found guilty of a second-degree murder charge. But still, Sunny's determined to fulfill her mother's dying wish. 
But when a classmate is gruesomely murdered and Sunny finds her brother with blood in his hands, well, oh, her mother's simple request becomes a lot more complicated. Dom swears he's innocent, <coughs> and although Sunny isn't sure she believes him, she takes it upon herself to look into the murder, made all the more urgent by the discovery of another body. And another. As Sunny and Dom work together to track down the culprit, Sunny realizes her other siblings have their own dark secrets. Soon she may have to choose, preserve the family she's always loved, or protect the brother she barely knows. That's Tender Beasts by Lizelle Sambury. My next and final book of today is one that I, I think I might pick this one up. It is called My Throat, An Open Grave. <laughs> this comes out February 20th. This is by Tori Bovalino. Apparently, this is Labyrinth meets Folk Horror. It's Ooh. a dark... Yeah. So, definitely a pre-order. It is a darkly romantic tale of a girl who wishes her baby brother away to the Lord of Wood. <laughs> so... Growing up in a small town of Winston, Pennsylvania, uh, it feels like Leia is drowning. She goes to church every day, or sorry, not every day, every Sunday. <laughs> oh, that would be a lot. She goes to church every Sunday, works when she isn't at school, and takes care of her baby brother, Owen. Like every girl in Winston, she tries to be right and good and holy. If she isn't the Lord of... If she isn't... The Lord of Wood will take her, and she'll disappear like so many other girls before her. But living up to the rigorous standards of the town takes its toll. One night, when Owen won't stop screaming, Leah wishes him away, and the Lord listens. The screaming stops, and all that's left in the crib is a small bundle of sticks tied with a ribbon. So filled with shame and the weight of the town's judgment, Lee is forced to cross the river into the Lord of Wood's domain to bring Owen back. But the devilish figure who has haunted Winston for generations isn't what she expected. He tells her she can have her brother back for the price of a song. A song that Leah will have one month to write. It's a bargain that will uncover secrets her hometown has tried to keep buried for a decade or for decades, and what she unearths will have her questioning everything she's been taught to fear. This is published by Page Street. This is called My Throat, an Open Grave. It's got a very sinister cover. This is by Tori Bovolino. My final dark YA book today for February 2024 is Where the Dark Stands Still. It's by A.B. Poranik. Comes out February 27. A girl with dangerous magic makes a risky bargain with a demon to be free of her monstrous power. <clears throat> Liska knows that magic is monstrous and its practitioners are monsters. She's done everything possible to suppress her own magic to disastrous consequences. She's desperate to be free of it and she flees her small village and delves into the dangerous, demon-inhabited spirit world. Then she finds a mythical fern flower. If she plucks it, she can use its one wish to banish her powers. Everyone else who has sought the fern flower has fallen prey to unknown horrors. So when Liska is caught by the demon warden of the wood, called the Lezzi, a bargain seems better than death. One year of servitude in exchange for the fern flower and its wish. She is whisked away to the Lezzi's crumbling manor. Liska soons make an unsettling discovery. She's not the first person to strike this bargain, and all of her predecessors have mysteriously vanished. That ver sounds very interesting. Mm -hmm. This is Where the Dark Stands Still by A.B. Poranik. And that wraps up all of the YA books we found interesting, dark, spooky, gothic for February of 2024. Stay tuned for our other podcast episodes. And if this is your first one, make sure to tune into our previous podcast episodes. We do have socials at Dark Side of the Library. We're on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, and our Amazon Live channel. So come join us there too. We try to publish every Wednesday and Friday and sometimes morbid Mondays. Please spread the word of Dark Side Library to other people who might enjoy spooky reads because it really helps. And rate and review on your favorite listening app or on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time.